Hi, welcome to the Adorn It online class. I'm Teresa Jones from Sweet Creek Moon. Welcome to the Adorn It studio. Today we are going to make these adorable weekender bags. You are here either because you've purchased the kit at Barnes & Noble or you have our Chambray pattern book which has them in it. Let's get started. We, both ha we have both the long and the short sleeve, um, the short handle. Let's just go ahead and get started. Now, here are the things that came in your kit or that you will need to purchase. We have the two kinds of fabric for the outside and for the lining as well as two buttons. <coughs> Excuse me, you will need to provide interfacing, a half a yard of interfacing, 20 inches of, fa of elastic, and because we have the buttons, you'll not have to provide your own unless you have buttons in your house that you absolutely adore that you want to put on the bag. Now, let's take the fabric. You're going to need to cut out from these two pieces, and we'll do it on this one. Take both pieces out, and you're going to cut them to 27 inches. After you've done that, which means just simply measure along. If you don't have a huge cutting pad like we do here in the studio, just take a measuring tape. Mark it all the way across to 27 inches and make the tiniest bit of a mark at the bottom. Once you've done that, it will be easy and do this on both the lining and the outside material. Line up your straight edge, and I do hope you have one of these because they make it quite a bit easier. Simply cut up the sides, and you will set the lining aside for later. <coughs> from the pieces that you have left, from the lining and from the outside, you are going to cut the pieces indicated. This is going to be the little tie on the front. We'll put this over here. This will be for the little tie on the front. This will be for the tab, and these will be for your handles. You get to choose which handles you want to do. For both handles, you will cut the entire two and a half inches all the way to the width of the fabric from the, the outside fabric and from the lining. If you want to make the longer handle, then you will need to do the same thing, cut two and a half inches wide by the width of fabric long, but in addition to that, you're gonna cut two more pieces two and a half inches by five and a half inches long. Okay, with those cut and the tab piece cut, we're going to set those aside. Now, the instructions are basically the same, except for if you decide to do the long handle, you're going to connect at the end of the long piece, one of the five and a half inch pieces, which we've done here. Now, with the bag cut out, you are going to turn it, and it says to do this, right sides together, which simply means it's the right fabric, the right side that you want people to see. So we're going to turn it around. There's an obvious difference. We're going to turn it around, inside out, match up the edges, the raw edges, making sure that the selvage, and when we talk about selvage, we're talking about this end of the fabric. Line them up and then run a quarter inch seam all the way up on both sides. I'm going to take it to the machine and be back. Now, with the edges sewn, we're going to take it now to the press. We need to take it to the iron so we can do some pressing. We're going to take, as we lay it around the ironing board, we're going to lay it a half an inch all the way around the top and we're going to press it. You can use pins if you want, but I find it rather easy because they used the edge with the selvage just to make sure that the selvage part is hidden and iron it all the way around. Press it so that your seams are sharp. Okay, once you have that done, we're going to add an additional two inches, which is very simple. Measure it under, pull it over, and again, use a pin if it helps you to mark the spot. But you'll find because of the pattern cut straight, it's easy to take and go all the way around. And again, you're going to press it. 
Now you've got a two inch piece that's going to be our casing and the little ruffle at the top of the bag for later. Once you have that part pressed, we are going to set it aside. So here we have it with the bags sewed on both sides, pressed under a half inch, pressed under two inches. Now, that's what it should look like, and we're pretty excited because it's starting to look like a bag. We're going to cut the inside for the lining, and that happens on this one. Okay. Now, for the lining, we cut it to 27 inches, remember. Now what we need to do is cut it, and for this, the easiest way to do it is by using one of these very long and handy rulers. We only need 16 inches from the fold up. So we're going to put the one at the bottom using a straight edge, go up to the 16 inch mark and lightly mark with a pen or a pencil. Do the same on this side, go up 16 inches. I'm gonna see it on this side and lightly mark. In the instructions, it, it has us show, it shows an inch down from that part. Again, mark on both sides. Now what I'm going to do is with my first cut, I'm going to trim the excess. And you save that trim because we can use it for something else on a different project. You'll find that when you do make handmade things, you'll be getting more creative and think of things to do with fabric that you already have. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it's straight and finish cutting it. Now set this aside for later projects that are going to come. <laughs> now, to get the middle part, I'm just going to fold this over, fold it in half, and again I'm going to use my trusty little pen, and I'm just going to make the smallest mark where middle is. Ta-da! So, so small. In the pattern that we send, it's going to say you need 15 inches, which means I'm just going to go from, if I can find my little, there it is, I'm going to put seven and a half on the little red mark because seven and a half and seven and a half is 15. I'm going to mark it here and I'm going to mark it at the 15. So now I will take my cutter and simply connect the dots. The middle points, just for reference, I'm not going to be cutting anything from there. So using my straight edge and the points, the bottom point up here, the inch, I'm going to cut off the sides. That was a nice cut. <laughs> we'll do this. Make sure that you hold the full, your full weight on that so it doesn't move. Let's see if I can do it perfectly this time. From the point that I drew on the bottom to the second one I put on the top, pressing firmly. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, set aside that. Now, what I need to do again is right sides together Again, you can see very clearly that this is, I'm going to put them together, and I'm going to run a quarter inch seam all the way down on both sides. Okay, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. Once we have added, you'll see that it's sewn now. I'm not going to turn it inside out. Here's what we're going to do. We have our perfectly sewn insides. Now we're going to put it inside of uh, our bag. Now this one, once I have it all ironed, needs to be turned inside out. No, right side out. And now I'm going to show you how to put the lining inside of the bag. We're going to switch to a different color. No, we're not. I apologize. No, we're not. So, right side out with the bag, wrong side out with the lining. Here's how we're going to do it. Matching seams to seam, because that's the easiest way to do it. Matching seam to seam. Remember that I we pressed two inches. We're going to now, and now you'll see why they're the opposite, that this bright part of the lining is going to go underneath the two inches. You're going to cover up about an inch. And on this one I would suggest pinning it. 
before you sew it. I'll go to the direct opposite side where it's been pressed, put the, match the seams underneath. And again, I would suggest pinning this one just because there's a lot of fabric to work with. We'll go all the way around, putting the one inch underneath our two inch and it can be less than that you just you just fiddle with it but whatever feels good and pin it all the way around on the inside okay next step remember those handles that you chose we are going to use make sure we used a fusible on the back and following the instructions you're going to put the interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric because this is the part we want to see so I've attached it on the back following the instructions and whatever you choose just make sure that you follow what they say so that it remains a permanent part of your purse. Then we will take, let me reach, ah, well, okay, I've got so many props over here. Switch into the other bag, same process to get there, you'll recognize the big bat, um, bag on the outside. We put the lining in, all of my pins are pinned in, and now we're going to do the part for the handle. I sewed the handle with the, oops, I sewed the handle together, right sides together on this one, and ran a quarter inch seam all the way down on both sides. You don't need to worry about closing it because that will happen when we um, sew the bag. Sew it on both sides. I'll take this to the machine. Sew it down both sides and then you turn it inside out. You'll notice that that's the part we did. Turn it inside out and you may have guessed we're going to press it so that it looks sharp. If you want to top stitch a quarter inch on the handle. That would be fabulous. We've done that on a couple of them, but that's your choice. But here's how we put the handle inside of the bag. Now, it's only pinned because I haven't sewn it because now I'm just going to do my handle. Go to where we have both seams meeting. You're going to put the handle underneath about a half of an inch and then you're going to pin it. So you'll notice that this becomes an extension of what is already around here and it, it's a bit of a contrast against that. That's what we like. On the other side, the same thing. Making sure that the lining is facing down, putting in the other side, go to the seam, which is what I've done, and go in a half of an inch. Now, this is where I take it to the machine. Now, I will sew all the way around, but I'm going to start from, huh? I'm going to start from the middle of the bag. Let me tell you why. We are going to, with the sewing, make a casing for the elastic that goes around the top. If you need a reminder that you need to keep a three inch hole open, set your pins and you'll know not to, to sew inside there. So I will sew all the way around, pulling my pins out as I go, all the way around, making sure my handle stays in, all the way around. Go over both handles and then when I get back to this side, sewing, I'm going to stop when I see the pin that's this way so that I can have this loop. Once that's all sewn, now this is sewn, we're going to flip the handle up so that now there's the contrast here. Then you will pin it on both sides. It's pretty simple once you see it. Pin it on both sides because you're going to want to, for stability, this is the best way to do it, a very clever idea that they had. Now we're going to go around, starting again at our three inch hole, and we're going to run a five eighths inch seam all the way around. Now if this isn't clearly marked on your machine, grab a piece of painter's tape and set it on the top of your machine so that you can make sure that the edge here stays the same as you pull it through. It's just a quick tip on how to make that easier. So I will go around, sew 5 8 sew 5 8 go right over the top of my handle, all the way around again, over the top of the handle. For extra security, you might want to back stitch. You get to choose. Come all the way back around until you get to here, and then stop. Which brings us to 
doesn't it look great? Because this is the bag. We're making our bag. So that brings you to, we need to put the elastic in. Okay. This is, and I already did, and I would recommend, highly recommend, that you use the huge pin. Because there's a lot of um, layers of fabric to go around. You will grab it. We'll do it with this one. You'll grab it, pull it, pull it through. And I'm just doing this. And then you will feed it all the way around. Now, I did this last night to make sure that my <laughs> elastic doesn't ever get pulled through too much. I am going to pin the edge of my elastic so I can't accidentally make myself want to cry because I pulled through too much. So feed it all the way through. It'll come back out. And you will take this part with the part that's coming out of here. And I'll show you on this one. And you will overlap. And then use a zigzag stitch, or if you want to do it by hand, but zigzag is pretty quick. And just go back and forth, back and forth, to make sure that it's sturdily sewn. Now, you'll see that it is sewn. Now, guess what I forgot? One of the pieces that we sew at the very beginning is the tab. This is how we cut it. We put it right sides together. And I'm confident this, you will do it instead of right now where I'm doing it. You'll do this at the same time that you do the handle. You will fold it in half because you want a little bit of a point. You'll fold it in half and measure about an inch. And if I had scissors, that would be easier to use. But I lost them in the pile of stuff. This works. This is what you end up with. Then you're going to sew a tiny little inch, uh, not even an inch, not a quarter of an inch, a, an eighth of an inch all the way around to the point, turn it around and finish sewing. Then you'll turn it inside out and you'll press it. Then you have the bright side. When I was putting in, and I'm just going to take it back, when I was putting in my um, handles, remember this part where we had the three inch opening? On the exact opposite side, I am going to take and just do this. Raw edge laid flat. This is pointing away from the purse. And then I'm going to bring it down. This will come when you sew the 5 eighths, the second seam around the top. So you will, when you're sewing your 5 eighths, be able to run right over the top and have the tab that we're going to put the cute little um, tie in at the end. Okay, now that we have this part, you have your own, this is the long one, you have your very own bag, it's pretty fabulous. You'll notice that we need to add one more thing, and that is the tie. This can be done in any, and you know what, by the time you get done with this, you may just be ready to put something else in, a piece of ribbon or something even a very lightweight scarf would look cute here, but we've included a piece of the inside fabric, the lining, as a cute little addition to the outside. Ta-da! Adorable. So, if you like what you see, and I hope that you do, because it's now your purse, your weekend bag, um, please click on the link below and follow us on YouTube because we'd love to see you back. Enjoy the day. Thank you.